Good evening, everyone. My name is Anthony Salgado, and I am an intern at the Duke Margolis Center for Health Policy. This is my first year. Uh, today, we'll be examining the efficiency of PrEP in adolescents for the reduction of HIV risk. And my primary mentors for this project were Wenwei Mao and Ipchita Barali. Uh, so just for some background, HIV incidence rates were unacceptably high among adolescents, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa and West Africa. And globally, 6,000 adolescent girls and young women aged 15 to 24 are newly infected with HIV weekly. And um, so we started looking at some interventions that could help reduce the and target adolescents specifically, and, more, and even more specific than that, if they prioritized young women. So we found some interventions such as education, contraceptives, circumcision in males helped prevent the spread of HIV overall. And then the final one that we looked at was antiretroviral combination therapy. So after doing a pilot study, uh, the intervention that we decided to go with was PrEP. And that was because PrEP is a relatively new therapy that can help reduce the risk of HIV by nearly 100% when taken correctly. And the, the introduction of new generic brands has helped uh, PrEP become a more viable drug for HIV uh, uh, reduction, HIV um, incidence reduction. So um, as the use of PrEP goes up, the easier it is for people to obtain it. Um, and some, there were some adolescent considerations, there were some ethical considerations, um, especially with looking at studies and seeing which ones uh, prioritize the privacy of the patient. So for this study in particular, we chose adolescents because as I said, they do make up a bulk of um, HIV cases. But additionally, uh, this population is uh, often forgotten because of the the time frame that they're at. They are before 18, so they're not able to be a part of a lot of studies, but they are still sexually active in many cases. So, um, and young women especially make up a bulk of HIV cases. So this is why we chose this population and intervention. So some objectives that we had for the study were that we wanted to understand which interventions when combined with PrEP can successfully uh, reduce the risk of HIV, or if it reduced the risk of HIV at all, uh, finds which methods of intervention are most cost-effective. And finally, how can resources properly be allocated to reduce the risk of HIV and if PrEP was even a viable option? So to do this, we used the PRISMA model. Uh, we did an initial search of Embase, PubMed, and Web of Science, and we found 2,738 relevant studies. And from there, we screened it based off the title, the full text review, and finally, we did a data extraction. In each of these phases, it had to be approved by two reviewers to reduce the risk of bias. Um, so here are our main findings for that. Population adherence was significantly um, factored in with education. Um, the more education um, was increased, the more that people had adherence with PrEP. And on average, minority patients were less likely to continue treatment, but when factoring in education, it can help lessen the effects of this. In addition, the introduction of PrEP, especially in a cost-effective way, or even in a zero cost way, significantly reduced the risk of HIV. As you can see by this chart of women aged 18 to 24, um, when given PrEP at no cost, adherence was also higher, so they were more likely to take their PrEP treatments correctly. And this can be reduced if PrEP, PrEP's uh, effectiveness rate was increased, if the length that it was effective was increased, rather than taking it daily or even weekly. Um, and finally, we looked at community and family. So some things that might decrease the use of PrEP, like domestic life, abuse, support, privacy, whether people were comfortable saying that they were on PrEP, uh, community, other uses of PrEP, misinformation, uh, saying that PrEP would make people sterile, things like that. Um, and then community-based programs where people would come in and, and uh, educate physicians and people that are already taking PrEP and helping them feel safe and more comfortable with the use of PrEP. So some implications, um, easier access to PrEP may reduce the cost and cost-effective PrEP leads to more adherence. And, um, Education around PrEP is a necessity for it to be effective. And so some effective settings we found were epidemic, uh, the more people needed it, the more cost-effective it was because the more was produced, high-risk settings, and those who have less access, and those who have more access to education, uh, being aware of the process and being aware of how to take PrEP was extremely beneficial to the adherence and, and people taking PrEP in general. And less effective settings were misinformation and familial situations, as I said before, such as domestic abuse. And that's all. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation.